Alright, alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another session. We're here. We are coming here for another session. <clears throat> Feeling a little bit sick today, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we're still gonna get Yo, it. Yo, what is going on everyone? Alright, so Nasdaq is pushing up. I still gotta get my coffee, bro, so. I'm just gonna chill. For right now. Pulling it down though, you guys saw him level two, 171. If it's real, fair enough. Um, but I do right, like that, not gonna lie. Not lose 180 is my stop. Maybe like a one. I like that for emerging right dragon up. right there. And bang, right off the bat, we take a big Palantir win again. Yes, nice little win on Palantir, guys. I said we we're gonna buy uh, that when it was down there. We buy that bottom, 2580. Uh, we're long. We go long again right now. On this I break. just bought that, this is that break for emerging dragon. Here to the high side on Palantir. We are waiting quick for that scalp on it. Break. Let's see if it goes. Go quick Palantir. scalp, quick scalp. Go, baby. Uh, starting to move, make some moves. Plan is about 15 Palantir. points. We're taking some off and cashing in right now. Already a big We're about nine points goes. in. Daily goal one met. Let's just keep going, yo. Always about that guy. So immediately goes for that 175 on uh, Sens, and then Phantom selling comes in. Small big size orders, but there is lots of liquidity at that price. I gotta go to chart. Scalping this, really scalping this toward the upside. Snap back up at the open, and, and I'm about to, to close. After a I Bang, close right there. The so close for the scalp. I could have closed like maybe 80% and hold a small position then, uh, in, but again, these are just quick scalps that I'm taking in on the market open. So we'll see what we do here. But yeah, quick scalp them up. About 0.40% up in the day. day. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good trade. All right, so it's breaking off the 200 DMA. Uh, crap, it's gonna it's gonna be quite a move. If it breaks over that level, I think it's gonna continue going up. Today I was I'm more of a bullish side on it, to be honest. Long 11:32, upside now with BlackBerry. We just destroyed Palantir. Palantir's coming back down, but we're out of that a little bit. Now we're gonna watch BlackBerry see if it has momentum to break through this 11:50. Yeah, and here comes GameStop running like a like a horse. Uh, Sens just got out. It goes back to that 180, so it looks like there's some strength. Over sold half a million. Can't be too happy about it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the order that was waiting because uh, if we turn over on GameStop anywhere around this 3950, I might use the lack of momentum there to start that position instead of uh, sort of waiting waiting for it to come to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, GameStop whenever I woke up today at like 6 a.m., I could see that we're probably going to maybe have a green day because of the V-shape we're having right over here. Or I guess you could say U-shape bowl size. And then you can see the R size doing the same thing and the liquid fixtures doing the same thing. For me, that's showing me that the momentum is starting to push back up. So this is a pullback and then a continuation toward the upside. That's how I see it at least. Um, yesterday, I was taking, I was, you know, more of a short bias on it. Um, and liquid 50 was not the same thing as it was um, today. So I mean, obviously, it could for sure make probably a lower high um, around this level. I would I would suspect that that level if it was gonna make a lower high, it's gonna be at that level right there. Comes up and makes a lower high and then comes down. I can see that because you know if we go to the one hour chart. So um, we go to the one hour you chart and look at 50s in the cell zone. Excuse me. Mac these in the winter mode and and we're you know below the 50 right now so it's making lower highs here so we shall see so kind of on the on the higher time frames it's more of a one hour i would say bearish four hour bullish just holding that 50 level and it's trying to push up so we should we shall see but yeah um if you guys are just joining us i took a quick scalp on the open right over here it's like about one it was about 1.89 r i had my stop below right over here off the regression line 270. i put my mic closer so i put my stop right over here uh, my risk reward just basically 15 points and now it now that it's kind of rejecting off that so we joined the EMA, so we shall see what we do here. Fifty minute looks like it's more of a bullish side. One hour it's bearish side, and then the other higher time from the bullish. But these are just my thoughts. Anything can happen. It's gonna be just a pullback and then a continuation. Um, I I'm not gonna trade that pullback, unfortunately. 
carrying the day for your boy. Listen, One minute uh, this here. This was a big talk yesterday, late in the day, guys. B N D O Bio Nano Genomics. I guess it was pretty much the entire session, but this run up late in the day took it up to almost eight. So hmm. eight even just broke. Yeah, it's the level that we have a level ready right here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's coming off from. That one again at some point today. Yeah, we know that name, and then we're going to get back to it in a second. I have to go back to GameSpot just for. So I have like a little thesis in mind in, the money, in my head. Buck, and then you know. This 39 uh, with divergence coming in, are all divergent levels actually coming off a an actual level, or is it just coming off this guy? Because right over here, you can see it's coming off this guy. Not technically, because it's coming off this zone right over here. But I feel like every divergent level, could be wrong about this, is coming off a, a certain level. It's a higher time from level, a zone, um, higher time from dynamic support and resistance. I feel like it's you know it's coming off something. Uh, DBVT, DBVT, I just went over, but DDD. Oh man, I'm gonna have fun with these. Thirty dollars. Right, um, Again, do as we say, not as we do. I did say I wanted to roll into a short. I told him back right now. But I have four stocks that I'm in. Walmart, and, uh, we're freaking down, bro. Oh my gosh, come on, Walmart. Yeah, I'm about to freaking close my Walmart shares, my Walmart, Walmart, my Walmart calls. Um, it was a good run. Holy crap, we're down about, yeah, almost 2%. Yeah, 2% now. Man, it is what it is. Disney, it's up about 0.24%. Tesla's up about 1.3%. McDonald's, Boeing, Intel All Red. Oh, my coffee's ready. I gotta go ahead and check that out. Your uh, USD, eh, for advice. I don't really care about that. I'll be right back. I, I like the, look, I like this spell. I took it once. Well, I took it like one, two, three, four. This is the fifth time, and the fifth time looks like it is going to be this time. It just broke a 170 uh, bidder. It is now a 165. Look, that's the remnants of that order. You just saw the last 50,000 shares go. Uh, it got back in at 180. That was the other key price. 10% uh, is basically right around here, the low 160s. Uh, we'll take some more shares out in and around that price. I just got some here at 155. And the next leg down is going to be this 150 to 155 area. So that working well. GameStop, if you can't beat them, join them. I uh, like the short below 40. It's above 40. Oh, uh, what? And I'm not sure. I have no idea. Sometimes this will happen. Uh, and, uh, every now and then. Long. I actually got 39.30, 39.90, which means a dark pool triggered my order, got me in, got me out and into position at, before it even broke the level, which usually we consider a bad wick, uh, getting me into position. In this particular case, it is blind luck that my price is like 39.90 and not like 40 oh cents like that. So an extra 10, a 20 cents saved and then 20 cents made. I just got some out of 40.50. Why high of day 41.50 here? Um, that'll be its own break. I'll probably take off a dollar fifty and then try to get back in if it takes the high of the day. Guys, we're just monstrous on our two positions, but I gave you this forty level earlier, and I, and I was like, you guys, if it happens, let me know. I don't know if you guys were doing that there, but we miss it easy long there at forty. Congratulations uh, to anybody that had that. I did want to go back over to weed stocks because uh, Tilray here. Uh, remember when I said twenty dollars was something that we would look at? Yeah, it would have been nice for me to actually put an order down there. Now you're at 21 and change. Watch out for the high side on Tilray. And, I mean, Palantir, guys, I don't know what else to do for you guys, but this has been a stock that I've loved. I've been hammering these trades. Uh, we're, we're, we're monstrous here. You can see the bottom. 50 cents on BlackBerry now, 80 cents now on Palantir. And uh, it's been a monstrous day, Brendan. What's up? Uh, Zoom, guys, we had the offering earlier in the week. If you look at the daily chart, it's been straight up since they had that uh, offering. 5% uh, again today. It was selling at the open, but this is already better part of a $10 move for Zoom, guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like it. Uh, 11.50 here coming through on BlackBerry. We just took some more off. We learned our lesson. Look at this reload. Like, you want to talk about playing something uh, as good as I possibly can, I feel like. That reload, we could have got better at 10.80 down there, but we put it on 96, 97, pulled it a little bit against us, and now reaping the rewards of some of these decisions today, guys. We only have two positions on, they're two for two, and they're two monster ones. So, uh, yeah, we're really happy. We will check back in on Wolf in a minute. Wolf we just turned her off. The afternoon high, Wolf was at 30.35. It just turned around at that exact same price. So it went up 28.50, right through 30 bucks. Uh, now it's starting to come back in. I think if it gets to like, like a 29, I call it like a 29.50 area. I'll be looking for maybe a bit of a dip buy, think some consolidation down there. It's very thin and there's not a lot of liquidity, but uh, there's a tiny level at 29.50 that might be worth a look. I like 27 better. Uh, that 30.35 looks like a good breakout price at least uh, uh, up for me on Wolf. 
Yeah, I'm going to take a long three thirty, eight thirty quarters here. Uh, we'll just see where, where it goes uh, on what path uh, as we go. Okay, WFC, look at 3270 there. I, I guess that didn't trigger. No, it didn't because we're not in yet. I was wondering why... Sorry. I was wondering why we made that move upside instead of uh, digging into Palantir and Blackberry, which I'm sure how happy that I did. Uh, we are going to wait for this one to go through now. 3280, and it's downside on WFC. Let's check back in on uh, JP Morgan, the real trade. And this is what I mean when I say I'm not going to trade it today. I predicted this choppiness, and that's exactly what's happening. So stay away right now from these names, guys. I mean, that's the thing. Away from the banks, I think next week is probably going to make a heck of a lot more sense. Benz is making another push. Let me zoom in so you can see better. Uh, got bottom wick here at like 62. Uh, next leg would have been 150, but if it's going to continue this push back up, 180 is going to be the level. Uh, 180 is where I'm short now, but I'm going to work back into some, some more uh, shares in front of that price. If it breaks 180, I'm just going to get out of Benz. I, I said I would uh, wait on Sundial. Uh, if 75 had been a little bit of something, I would have tried it. Oops. I was doing the other way. Uh, but the level I'm going to be watching is going to be up at 80. It's turned at 79 once. If it breaks this, we're talking about a buck. And you know I'll be all over that when it gets there. If it gets there. i got to cancel all my orders here because uh, some of them not hitting yet. So BlackBerry absolutely destroyed. We're super, super happy with the way this one turned out for us. Uh, BlackBerry, great trade, man. We just got out again at 45. Now we hold 5%, less than 5%. We are also less than, unfortunately, 10%. We're at like 2% less than Palantir. It's been a big day, just two for two for me. Nothing else hitting. I'll check back on 3D when we get back from Brendan. All right, we had Delta earlier in the week, guys, with uh, earnings. Jeff Lee coming up next week, but uh, they announced their conference call is going to be virtual, obviously. Uh, a little bit of positivity. Relative volume in the story here, uh, not a huge move, but uh, Jeff Lee being going into it. Jeff Lee, well, why not? I'm just going to throw some more bids out there to make sure when Char continues his call that we do get some shares out. Uh, I wanted to make, make sure we got to uh, both of the IPO names that we already talked about. Uh, uh, Ruth a little bit there, but uh, there was the other one. Sorry, I, I gotta go to Lemonade first. Whoops. Uh, Lemonade did break that 154. Uh, I didn't want that order off of the open. I probably should have done it. It's down to this 150. If it bounced off 150, I'll try 164 again. Uh, but I'm also gonna take a 150 break. It's an even dollar uh, that's too hard not to play off of. This was the one I thought was gonna sell for a while. We got the first level support anyways later, but liquidity a bit questionable on Lemonade for now. Right. Uh, Microvision, some of the LIDAR stocks just popping up here, uh, led by this one, MVIS, 11%, big volume as well. Blue 7, 7 got taken out right to 750 almost for uh, Microvision, guys. Yeah, Microvision, uh, there's a lot, a, a lot of happening in that name. I'm really happy to see Alibaba uh, back to the high side as well. We'll check out some Microvision. Look at Plug Power now falling uh, a little bit down that 5 plus percent. I should be checking on 3D, so I got to do that in a second. Uh, plug Power, yeah, nice little pop at 65 there. Now coming back in, 62 coming into play uh, as well. If you look at a daily chart here for Plug, uh, let's just quickly look at that. Uh, yeah, not much. It's been going parabolic. Let's leave Plug for now and just continue to look at something else. Palantir still at 40 cents in the money and Blackberry as well uh, making moves. Well, I'm watching that 11 area. I think it's a good reload spot. Uh, the 3D does finally break that. It does break that 30 when your initial short would have been great. That's fine. Alrighty, guys, what's going on? And slammed Got a coffee here. For now, it's a bit of a temp. Uh, All right, uh, we're back. Break, but uh, overall, I'm not going to call it back because I wasn't watching the level two. Be able to give you. I'm feeling a little bit to sick today. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if it gets to that price, I actually coughed up blood. Size, That's like the first time I ever coughed up fucking blood. I don't know why. <laughs> do I got like a new version of COVID? Uh, you do have to join them. That could be the case here in that particular name. Uh, BNGO, uh, this was one I didn't remember. My right, Nasdaq is just uh, chilling right now. Before the open, uh, made a I'm going to leave it be. be. Bounce off VWAP. It's still looking very, very strong. I'm gonna UJ, say just choppy. GU, choppy. GJ. Uh, no trouble there. Choppy and today. No, no Chara there. New team in Washington. Where did he play? Uh, he's playing in Washington. I would have said it. I would have. I didn't know where he played, or I would have made the reference. Like, We're know, holding support off that Bollinger uh, Band. I mean, I'm gonna take a re-entry toward uh, the outside uh, once we uh, see uh, okay, confirmation. Uh, forget about the day chart. Uh, let's just look look a little bit more into this play. 31, 31, 20, 32, 20, 36, 50 as the high. Virgin down that four percent. There's not, I mean, it's funny because it seems like there's lots happening, but like I haven't really been able to find too, too many stocks uh, here so far to trade on levels that I like. Like, this is just right in the middle. We can always go back to one of our favorites, A and B, but Brendan always gives us a name anyway. So, what's up, B? Oh, wow, GameStop. Uh, top one today, guys. Big range on GameStop, right back towards day lows there. Uh, same. Box L, I uh, wanted to mention this one. Colorado School Board District uh, teamed up with Box Light. You can see there was a little pop aftermarket yesterday. 
Uh, so there was uh, the okay, we're pulling back. board district uh, purchasing one of their products to implement in two schools, which is uh, good for them. So higher again today for Boston. Alrighty, so alrighty. All right. Frustration again on, on GameStop because it's a little bit of a roller coaster. Short 39.60, out long 39.30. Make money on half the long. Try to hold the rest for the high of the day and then get right back out 39.60. So overall, uh, I mean, you're gonna see like basically flat. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Uh, very Pulling back right now. I'm not gonna jump I like back. that. I liked it a lot. Uh, I wanted to go back to Posh if I could. Uh, I, I did like the short, but remember there was no liquidity when 95 broke, so I didn't catch it. Uh, it's sort of the same thing when it retested 95. 95.50 would have been uh, the place to get into this one. 91 was the bottom on the first day. Uh, I think maybe there's going to be some support at that price hmm. on Posh, and that'll be very interesting. Uh, that we have a quick look at. So we're out of Blackberry. Uh, let's just see if we can find it, uh, another way to get in there. So we get out right where we got in. We have two percent of our position left. Uh, no big deal on that one. And the only one we have left is Palantir. And again, this is another two percent position uh, that we have on it. When I, when I say those percentages, it's percentages left of these trades. So sometimes I will hold a smaller portion on. So if you're seeing that on the bottom, like right now we're just two for two with Best Buy uh, and Palantir and the Best Buy, uh, BlackBerry, and they both been really, really good trades. So. Uh, we're going to wait to see, but Palantir right now, you see how choppy it's becoming? Uh, I'm just wondering if this trade might be done. It still does this. It can go on another run, but we'll have to do some more work on Palantir. What's up, dude? Uh, just checking on one of the clean energy names. Polar I Power. just entered. Yeah, no real significant headlines. You can see it popped up aftermarket yesterday, maybe on the Biden uh, presentation uh, in the aftermarket, but uh, Polar Power, 34%. All right, so we're in profit already. Uh, I'm just watching this consolidation on, on, on Whoop. Uh, yeah. Uh, Petco at 29 here, guys. Uh, there was a 28.50 uh, 28 bottom just to zoom out. Uh, so you can see, it's only yesterday's action that you can work from. It's, it's sort of worth bearing mention in the afternoon. Uh, when it did pull back, this is right at the close, and then post market at 29.40 close, and at all times of consolidation at 29 even. So if we hold this level, uh, I'm going to like a breakthrough of yesterday's close price, so this 29.40. So if we can hold these bottoms here and make a nice little run, if we break below the space out of the, out the window. Uh, but as long as we hold, 29.40 is going to be a break long for me on Petco. Hadn't made a trade today. Kind of wish I wasn't waiting for a bottom pick on this one because uh, off the open, that was a screamer. Now, as we said, get off the weed. Uh, because pulling back right now. Today. Uh, it's pulling and, back uh, from that yeah, high. It hasn't been a good one because he did call. It's a bear we'll see if I get out half right. at uh, risk. All, I like a 14 break here, I think. Uh, on, on, uh, ask. Huh? Okay, Brendan. What's up, bud? <laughs> I mean, I can wait. It's not that short. Uh, Ehang, guys, three days in a row here we've been talking it's about this. It was, uh, I think it was Monday. We, we said they were flying cars, individual flying cars. Ehangs is popping up here again. All right, so it's pulling back right now. $50 for E8. I'm going to go ahead and see what we do here. We so we're still holding support the right there. All of the moving stocks in case, again, you're invested in some of these plays or you're thinking about, uh-oh, my screen uh, is Rejecting off the 200 uh, EMA. But in, in case E-Hang uh, comes through, we'll watch that one. I just want to talk. I've been averaged in now twice, and I won't do it again in the BlackBerry. I'm trying to use these bottoms. My feet are kicking something down here that seems to be a little bit loose. Um, but uh, 1060, 1070, it might be fine, Rob. Uh, yeah, my screen's fine now. Yeah, it's fine now. Uh, 11, $10 uh, coming to the high side. Anyways, I just want to say that I'm averaged in a little bit. It's not the big position that I had on here, but it's a decent one. So watch out for 1060, 1050 break. Is yeah, we're going to wait. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait, wait this one out. Here, just cause sure, I don't think yeah. Still bullish on the intraday chart, on the 15-minute chart. This is the level Sean's talking about, double bottom. So we shall wait and see what we do here. I just want to make sure you guys got the visual look as well. We definitely uh, uh, do the best we can. Uh, we do share our team. Sean Hill said, hey, Jay, can you explain the system? Which particular system? Because I trade various different systems. Um, so this system that you see on the screen right now, that is called, well, it's, it's not one particular system. I trade like various systems on, on these indicators. Uh, but if you are interested, you should look up Dr. Ken Long and Van Tharp institution they're basically one of the best professional traders out there that teach people traders like actual complex systems and then so you know the indicators that i use are right now currently dr ken long's indicators um that he custom made so um yeah he has like a very complex way of looking into the markets which i mean it, it may confuse some people but at the same time i love it because 
it gives them a, a, a unique edge in the market. You know, these are particularly like indicators that no one uses. Like it, it's set for his his systems, and they're there for a reason because there's there's a mathematical formula for each indicator, like with the PSAR, with the um, regression lines, with the um, the baby dragon, which is the green Bollinger band, and you know having. Um, to like basically this Bollinger Band, this Bollinger Band, and this Bollinger Band, and then the smallest Bollinger Band. So there's lots of complexity to the system, to the, I guess, his indicators. And then so he uses different kind of um, systems like swing trading systems and day trading systems. So right now I'm using his day trading hybrid systems. So this trade was basically um, an emerging dragon scalp that I took as the Bollinger Band started to basically break from the previous high. And then this trade is basically a regression line crossover um, support Bollinger Band mean as a, in an RLXD, RLXD entry as well as it came up from the baby dragon. So it just tells me that, hey, price action wants to maybe continue going higher. And I use confirmations for my other systems um, to kind of see what, you know, are, are both of my systems aligned right now. And they are. You know, we have the liquid 50 up in the buy zone. MACD isn't where it's supposed to be, but it is what it is. We're above the 50 right now. We had a level two entry. If this was a, if it was coming off a level, 15 minute was bullish. We're having that V shape right there. Only thing that I would say is the 200 EMA is kind of in the way right there. Yeah, we're chopping right over here, so we'll see. We'll see what we do here. Did hold 29 even. I, I, you heard me say it's probably worth a buy down here. Why am I even waiting for that? AG break? Like, the had its first green day today. Uh, the risk rewards so they can get down like this 29 on the pullback. GF. Taking some out in front of 30. Uh, that gives red you, like, today. UG red. Winner, so Nothing really anything significant, anything significant for me. And then we can try to take out that high of day 30, 35. Your like CAD swapping the 50. Anyways, so, first green uh, day in a while. Alongside. Looking okay, we're pulling back right now. Somewhere on the short side, so 95. Just chopping at this level. Uh, so it's continuing to look weak. Uh, this is something that we said all morning long here that uh, uh, Petco looks relatively strong and uh, Fox looks a little bit weak going into today. This is strictly to get shares. It's only done 630,000 shares. I might not be able to get something actionable in this stock unless it breaks the absolute low of the day and volume really picks up. So this doing, I mean, six to one is the actual. Yeah, it's chopping today, in, uh, just like yesterday. And it wasn't differently priced, but basically a three to one price difference. So but yesterday we waited it out. We had like a red day in the beginning of the trading session. I was down about one percent for the day. We waited it out, and eventually we're up two. We were up two percent on the day, around like eleven or twelve. I think like twelve, uh, twelve p.m. We just waited it out basically. So just being patient with it. Sometimes the market just does its thing, and later on the day it doesn't move that you were expecting. Bye bye, Palantir. You're off to the races. And congratulations, anybody that's long with me on Palantir. Follow me on Twitter. We'll put that up on there. But we've been all over this name. I've uh, been recommending Palantir for a very, very long time. You can see this little long at the bottom here. And this is what we're talking okay, about. Now we're pulling here back up. I put the chart up earlier on Palantir. 2590, 26, we take that break. That's earlier from today. And then we just reloaded again to the high side on Palantir 2740. So that's why you're seeing that big win for us come through. Uh, and then WFC, hell yeah, what a great trade this has been for me as well. We're double our daily net already again, guys. Uh, and then here we go, uh, BlackBerry, it just doesn't stop. Like now we're long at 83 down here on BlackBerry. Out some 11s, it's just a big day. We go three for three on a monster day. It's a Friday, we're not on Monday. Kevin O'Leary coming in about 30 minutes. What up, Kevin? Can't wait to talk to you. Give it to us, Brenda. A little bit of strength coming through in some of the retailers, guys. Kroger just popping Jay is bullish right now. Just double check your earnings. But kind of choppy, ranging in the last couple of days. Uh, we broke above that high, 33.50. GN, it's making a new high right now. So three G. It's really significant to be honest. Break. It just not even. I know. I saw Austin trade Euro Euro Z today. To, to be honest, it's not even a clean pair because of the swapping with the fifty. So yeah, I could have taken the scalp on that, but. 
so I'm gonna take a break of I don't like how it's appearing in the higher time frames. Uh, I haven't gone into this one yet, but the, the plan was to use that level with great off the open if it gives me a shot. It is again. making a new low right now. If it holds that bid, uh, no way I'm gonna get into it. Uh, still trying to see if we can get up only 25 cents of the money on Petro. All right, we got stopped on that position right there. And then see if we can't get a 30 break uh, into that 31.35, where I, where I like that breakout as well. Look, guys, mad love for everybody today. Look, we like your super chats. I'll give this to Valeria. Uh, you know, you want the money, you want the real money thing for Palantir? There it is. Let's go. Run the money thing money, right now. I'll push money, that for you. Money, 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 money for Palantir. Money, All right, S&P 500 is down. And then thank you Euros 30 is down, so that's probably why the Nasdaq's trying to follow. Uh, Dow Jones 30 and S&P 500 is down right now. Thank you for watching the show. That's All the way important. down to max ADR. Again, Even Keep the Russell 2000 is down 1.2% for today. You're welcome. Like, so that could be one of the reasons why the Nasdaq is following that there's another one i made the call there it is right there thank you so much easy so i was listening about 0.7 percent on that so basically break even for the day because one win and then one loss let's just keep it running man we've got all the calls today for for some reason again a blackberry monster winner for me today uh big time there palantir i don't whatever i don't need to keep talking about that and then wfc like the rain just comes down on wfc the sticky notes do not fail we have the sticky notes here maybe there should be a monthly membership for the sticky notes more to come on that one thank you so much for everything i'm just joking more to come on that but we're gonna wait to see as this just keeps on taking we're three for three and we're monstrous today guys this is going to be a big day it already is congratulations check at the bottom you can check our positions and you can check the damage that we're doing let's go i didn't see a couple of names there thank Woo! you for going to that super chat there obs bbib anytime there's a name that's not on our list or i haven't watched before i will definitely add it and then uh people who can't give you information on it i just don't have any info on either one of those stocks uh, i want to go to this uh, bbbc actually we're unable to uh, many might be unable to say this one today but uh, uh it was a good look uh, off that 560 uh, of course if i tell you guys i like this level this is the short that i would have uh, and i would put it on um we were unable to do that i couldn't execute on the stock today uh for some for, for, for some reason on our platform but anyway 550 was the level it is coming off heavily if you still have profits there um you probably want to get out of it uh 3d systems just broke fix is up about 1.4 percent 1.8 percent actually uh, I'm going to put my stop at that 30 area. It shows so you guys the entire markets. time frame uh, why I like that out in the 15 minute chart. If it gets down to 29, take some profit and then down towards that 28 level. Put a wave it around for this short because it looks too strong off the open. I'm uh, now playing it on the way back in. Okay, uh, so right now we're just looking through here. We have Kevin O'Leary coming up. Let's go to number three, I believe I was told for Kevin O'Leary. So I believe it's right there. It is. Bang. I finally get it right. So there's Kevin O'Leary coming. In about a half hour, I'm going to talk to him about a couple things here about day trading, being gambling, if it's gambling. How am I only negative four days over the last four days? We'll see. Uh, but that's coming up very, very soon. We're going to talk to him about that. Palantir, I guess I had a stop order here. I did not mean to get out there. So we're now flat on Palantir, but it's been a monster day uh, for us on that name. And breaking 328 is another long here, guys, for Palantir. So let's get ready to rock and roll uh, on a 28 break. Like, I don't know how juicy uh, this one's going to get. Yeah, nothing really, really interesting on the forex side right now. It's coming here at 28. So 200,000 shares. See ya. Watch this one just get eaten up right now. Manny B, thank you so, so much uh, for that super chat. Holy crap, we are getting super chat alert right now. Welcome to Trader TV Live. Uh, welcome, Joey D. Thank you so much for that. There it is again. Jeremy, look, they're loving even the longer term calls. You love that PayPal call at 200. Too bad you weren't with us last January where I gave the call at 100 PayPal. 108 is my long on PayPal. And then there it is again. He's no shrimp, uh, but let's not chill. Oh, he's no shrimp chill. I, okay, but there's another $100. Thank you so much. Pure Leaf, guys. Look, I love the marijuana space. You can keep looking at that. There's truly, there's Pure Leaf. Thank you for that. That's a big one. But look at this, guys. Our bet, our bed bath and beyond. Like it's Blackberry now ripping to the high side. What a great buy, 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 buy. We are just in the money. We are crushing it today. Thank you for the big day. It's a big super chat day for us. It's Friday. It's Kevin O'Leary Day. It's also, Brent, and we're going to go to Brent in a second, but we also do have another big one. Jay-Z, Young Hove, not in the building, but Michael Arbach, chairman, the parent company, Graham.U coming Are we just waiting right now? Interesting. I want to actually invest in this. Again, we don't shill companies. These are legit companies coming on to Neo today. We're going to talk about that with Brendan. He was on last week or a week and a half ago. Oh, it was last week. And it's going to be a big one. There goes 
Oh, we haven't hit this one in a while. This is the kind of day we're having. We're feeling waves today. It's like a Superman type of thing. WFC, look at this WFC trade. Sorry, Brendan, I'm going to make you wait a couple seconds. WFC down to 32. Ooh, Walmart's this trying to make a new high right now. Win right now. Uh, checked out, we're short at 67. A 60 cent win. Tesla, and did we call coming WFC down. Short? We were very, very patient with this one, and it is a monster win. Sorry about that, Brendan. Had to get that going, but I can catch my breath now, drink a little bit of water. What up to Hydration Nation? And let's go to Mr. Wiccans at the big screen. Lots of opportunity so far this morning. Looks uh, like the energy uh, sector's uh, down for uh, today. We had a, a, a bit of a review here heading into 10 o'clock. Let's have a look at North American markets here. We have the S&P, the Dow, both down 0.3%. Uh, NASDAQ trying still. I mean, we mentioned this in the pre-market guys still kind of around that break-even point really nothing doing so far uh, as far as the nasdaq is concerned it's interesting to see this kind of negativity in the overall market but so many individual opportunities that's why we go down to the individual stocks uh the russell full percent two days in a row this week we've had all-time highs for the russell so a bit of a pullback here almost to full percent s p csx here in toronto dead flat uh down in brazil they're a little bit lower as well uh pushing on two percent in fact for Brazil, there we go, my screen is switching. Uh, a couple things from the watch list to be careful of. BBD, I was really interested in this 32 up here. Didn't quite get there. Got to about 31 and a half, straight back to 29. So gapping down this morning, we talked about it with Mark. 31 and a half was kind of this consolidation area from yesterday in the afternoon. Didn't quite get there though, but straight back to 29. Uh, yeah, Alrighty. still strong, back above 11 now. Trying to hold uh, as we push towards day highs here for BlackBerry. So coming down on the Nasdaq right now. Behind this move for BB. I like how it's break to it breaks toward that level. Yeah, say there's a lot going on. It's a bit of an understatement here. I'm trying to recapture it very quickly. Uh, the 30 short BB, I was able to get some out for a 50 cent win. Uh, holding the second third out for uh, uh, just in front of a dollar, and then we'll try to hold the rest till the absolute low of the day. Waited for the turn a little bit on that one. I did get in the sundial. I uh, got like 10% out when the 75 broke because it didn't really go very far. Uh, Chara continues to run into money for uh, for me here, and I also want to go back over to Whoop, uh, Petco. This one looked pretty good. Uh, we got this 29.50 uh, break. My stop is down around the 29 area. Uh, I got ha I got some out up here at 29.85, and then we slammed right back down. If we can hold this consolidation, I said I like 29 as an entry and didn't take it. Uh, I'll probably get back into some more shares of a tight stop for the second half. Uh, and then, of course, the first shares will be at that 29. Even uh, somehow it looks like it is trying to roll over. I did get that 75. All right, so it's, it's making a lower high right over uh, here. There. So, uh, Even though the liquid 50 is falling, now, I'm going to go ahead and try shorting it. For quite a while, and, uh, this is just a day too play, uh, rejected off oh, hard yeah. on that level, and I it's coming down on that level. So that's something I like. I, same price I, have I just before. sold right uh, there. Instead, I get back in on this consolidation. You'll see me short here at 338. It is retesting the low. I've had bids all morning. I'll allow this one to come back to me. Uh, also, target is three dollars even. We got close at three thirty-three, so I'm looking for it to go ten percent down from yesterday's close. A bit of a change to how I usually get out of these. Okay, uh, seventy-seven uh, eighty right now on GameStop. We'll wait to see what Alrighty, we we're short on market. that right now. It's breaking out. Look at that. Uh, like Look at that breakout. I'm, I'm taking it as a so collapsing dragon. As the dragon is starting to break toward the previous low. And we are falling uh, through the roof right now. Uh, Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Dude, look at that freaking insane breakout, guys. Alright, we're locking our stop at break even in all our positions right now so we can't lose on it. Bro, almost 1R in just literally less than a freaking 30 seconds. Insane. Literally insane. <laughs> Look at that uh, breakout. So right now, Freaking insane. And change, but we, we're now out of all right, so I lock all my stuff. All my positions are break even, so I can't and, uh, lose on this yeah, trade. Take 40 cents on and guess what? But let's just we're back into profit, baby. I don't think we get four dollars today on a downward move, but we are short. Look at this. Look at that freaking right move, guys. Dude, wow. I mean, this is what it is. Close your eyes, man. Uh, because right now we just 40 ones right here. Uh, we are just like running the market today for some reason. A downside on GameStop. Look at this play on WFC. We were out pretty much of everything. We have what a freaking beautiful trade. WFC Blackberry finally said it right. Look at this trade, guys. Like in here, in, in. What a freaking beautiful trade. Look at that freaking breakout, guys. Literally insane. That's about freaking 34 points in less than a minute. Just money right there. Three times now, Daily Gold. Three times 
and it's going to be more than that. It's pushing even up. I'm closing about half of my positions right now. win right now on GME. Oh, just got slapped. You said 41 on GME, but you meant like 41 as, as the pennies on the dollar. And that like threw me off, way off, because I actually thought that's the high of the day. Uh, so, uh, I managed leave to a like if you saw that trade go live, bro. Leave a like, leave a like. Uh, but four even just came down on I'm Charles. risking about 1.5% uh, so, uh, on that trade. So, I risked relatively a big position on that. Is, uh, but the reason why is just because we broke toward those levels. As as was, I like how we broke all through all those levels right there. And so, for me, whenever we break toward those levels, I feel like it's just... Oh my god, it's just keep on pushing up. I feel like it's going to be like a really nice trade. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that trade, guys. Insane. Look at that momentum. Frick, almost 50 points in a minute. Alright, so I just closed half. I'm up about 1% on the day. Actually, uh, I'm up about 0.70% up for the day. So close to 1%. I lock my stop into a little bit more into profit. I'm trading the NASDAQ 100, which is the tech sector of stocks, basically. What a freaking amazing push. This is like, I don't know. I love it. I love seeing these kind of trades. Because like right over here, it was pretty choppy. You guys saw how, you know, I, I won here. I lost here of the choppiness, and then once we got out of that choppiness, we finally see a breakout just with clean, 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 clean momentum right there. So, feeling good about that. We're almost about 2R, into, almost 2R in profit. So, what a freaking amazing trade. I'm going to hold, I'm going to close a little bit more at 2R, and then I'm going to hold it. Um, for a few more dollars. Look at that breakout on the 15 minute chart. Rejected off that 200 EMA and then just freaking collapsed. It's, that's the power of levels. Power of levels right there. Bro, what an amazing, it's still falling bro. Oh, 2R right now, mm, easy. All right, I'm closing about S around uh, another like 30%. All right, close about 30%. Actually, 25%. So I have like about um, about 30% left. Bro, look at that breakout. Gosh, dude. I'm just like, I'm astounded. 65 points. Even in falling. 65, almost 70 points right there. Man, if I was trading that on my scalping account, I would have made like $1,000 right there easily. But look at that. Look at that breakout. Oh my god. I rejected off that EMA. Helms all the way down. So I was bullish on it, but I also knew that since we were making lower highs on the higher time frame, so we could potentially make a lower high off that, off like right over here. I knew that we could pot potentially make a lower high because of the one hour and then just come down. So even though I was bullish on the 50 minute chart, I don't just, I try not to stick at one direction. I try to confluence directions on the higher time frames and see what price action is doing. I mean, eventually this thing could go all the way up if it really wants to, but I'm, um, you know, I'm mostly out. Yeah, yeah, I took my profits. I have like 25%. I'm up about 1.3% 1. 1. up for the day. So that's, that's pretty good. A really good freaking trade. I think that's like the, one of the cleanest trades that I've traded. At least this week. Yeah, for sure this week. One of the cleanest trades. Yo, Mauricio, if you're watching this, bro, did you catch that? That's a sick freaking move. I don't know. I just, I just get excited about those moves. Not that I'm making money, but more of like the market is actually moving really fast, and I love like volatility. Look at that move, guys. Almost 80 points right there. Insane, insane, insane. It's a big move up to 308, but right back down below 3. I want to show you this one as well just popped up. Westwater Resources, Dude. big flush there from 5 down to 475 on a huge volume spike, guys. So some of the clean energy names still moving around.
But just an update there. We take Tyler and Pierre, and I wish uh, that. And I wish obviously we had more kids. We All right, guys. So literally, like, we took this freaking amazing trade. This is one of the cleanest trades that I've take, taken this week for sure. So we were looking for longs, but as it rejected off the 200 EMA, I knew that on the higher time frames we were making lower highs. Liquid 50 was in a sell zone, so we had a potential to make, you know, fall today, just like yesterday. Yesterday I was short biased, and you know I was I was patient, and eventually it, you know, it came all the way down. Um, so from right over here, you know, we were patient with it. Um, and looking at the entry right over here, um, I took two trades on the open. So um, one trade scalp for a uh, breakout of a emerging dragon made about 0.4 R. Actually, I made about 1.2 R, but made about 0.40 percent in profit. And then I took a loss right over here, um, just basically trying to take it along for a continuation toward the upside. And then as it rejected hard off the 200 EMA, we had so much pins right over here, which told me that we rejected off that level. And you know the higher time time frames are you know trying to push it down. So we took this entry right over here and literally less than freaking like five minutes we made about um, already 2r 2.6 r in that so that was a really freaking clean trade i think one of the clean cleanest trades ever because like within less than one minute it made me uh like i was already in like one r in profit so really good trade for the day um just a freaking amazing trade i'm up about 1.3 r for the day with about um, 0.7 percent of profit still roaming uh, so yeah just a really good trade just being patient with it just basically levels guys you you look at those levels you see if there's any levels if it breaks out toward the level it breaks toward the level it's going to break out and then a continuation of that of that level so it's just something that i'm really good at me that's why i named my scalping system the mechanical level scalping system um, just because it's all about levels so just a freaking amazing trade look at that big freaking bar right there insane all right so we're about to close out if it breaks above here so i'm about i'll take about maybe one r in profit if it goes up here which is fine i'm cool with that i'm just gonna be patient with it to see if it continues going down we flush ourselves on the toilet for that one, but it's one of these kind of days. Let's just keep the profit going. It's a wonderful and interesting. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it's not even done today for today. Like for sure today. Like looking on the and as like a hundred. Um, S and P five hundred. We're already max ADR, and we saw that pin. So ADR means average daily range. So it's the max daily range that you know it has potential for. So on the S and P five hundred, we're already max ADR. Dow Jones thirty. We're already max ADR. Um, 2000 not yeah we're max ADR but on the Nasdaq 100 this is something to look for we're not even max ADR yet we have still about um, about 95 points to ADR so we still have a, a massive run to go on Nasdaq 100 and then yesterday we had kind of a clinch day we, we didn't really have a lot of momentum yesterday um, like it was more of a you know a, a, on a daily chart if you look at the daily chart on that specific day it was a small candle right over here this is a small candle right here so we know that um, for the for the average daily range average range for each day it's about I'll say about almost 100 points and it didn't even move 100 points fully so I knew that we're probably gonna see a breakout today um, whether it's it's up or long doesn't matter so um, yeah it definitely has, <coughs> excuse me it definitely has a lot of room to ADR we have 94 95 points to ADR so yeah I'm excited about that let's see what we do here we still have a position running right now it's weird. I actually didn't type that in the chat. I'm like, I'm staying the heck away from this one because it looks entirely too strong. My last trade was and, a, a one you know, I was long biased. Not gonna lie, I was I was kind of long biased on it. Um, for the intraday chart, which is the 15 minute chart, um, just because we're making kind of an oval shape right over here. You can kind of see how that fucking like just bang. It just destroyed the the little U shape, whatever. Um, but that's just because of you know how the indicators and price action was showing me. But I do I, I didn't know that you know if it if it wasn't gonna make a U shape I knew that you know at these levels we could reject hard uh, at the zone and then at the 200 EMA. Okay. All right, so I'm getting out. 
threat of it here. One two eight five nine point one. And then I'll, I'll maybe add in later, or re-enter again later. Because we're, we're making support in this zone right over here. Which is technically a divergent zone, because it's coming off divergence. Apparently it's pretty busy, but they got a nice little. So they have, I think it's like 20 people allowed uh, per per um, rink right now. So that's them. And I'm really proud of my man because he's quite the hockey player. Uh, he's eight, and he's definitely teaching his little sister here uh, how to skate. And she is uh, quite the athlete too. So I'm uh, definitely looking out for that. Shout out to my wife. Thank you uh, for bringing them there. And uh, on a day like today, and just in general, guys, get out and get some exercise. Like. You can't be stuck at home. I know we have a stay-at-home order here in Ontario, but uh, you got to get, especially the kids, you got to get everybody out there uh, to enjoy everything. Uh, Palantir, like, wow. Uh, I'm just super impressed with the way this one's been moving. You know, we buy the dip. We buy, I mean, we didn't even buy the dip there. I mean, this was a dip, but we were uh, waiting to get aggressively lost. The thing was, like, I, I could have basically had a tire stop loss on this to get a bigger risk reward, but... Um, I was just being careful because I just took a loss right there. But I, I could have basically put my stop loss like right over here and made like 4R on it. But hey, it is what it is. I started pushing down again. I think there's another opportunity to crack this. I'm gonna go short one more time. 336 on GameStop, and just see if it gives me uh, this data one more time. I think this is worth it. Maybe a short 337 also. Uh, let's start to average it. If I get 37s, we'll take it on GameStop. Then. Oh, well, so uh, everyone we mentioned. The thing was like, okay, too. There's diverges on top uh, as well. Right over here. Uh, yesterday, so I'm gonna put this as my really case study myself. today. I didn't think it would come into play on um, really scalping on the scalping system. Because uh, it is divergent. Divergent. If it takes it out again, and this is nothing against uh, Virgin Galactic, um, I'm just some momentum shorting. You're shorting through that 3090. Uh, certainly, if I took it the first time, I'd be shorting uh, sitting here uh, with it like five, ten cents against me. Sometimes the second time is a charm, but I, I had it rigged down because I like the level, so I'm going to get into Virgin Galactic if I can to the south side 3090. It's coming back off that. Uh, the positive news that's being added to, or that new ETF, uh, the ARK, uh, SPACE ETF. So SPACE going into the SPACE ETF. Falling now, and falling even lower. We are tracking cost. It is catching a bit at 90 even. Uh, there was some size bids. Um, max ADR, so the max ADR is called the ever like I use this indicator called, um, oh we're pushing now even further, but 3R now. Max ADR is basically a tool that I use, you can find it on TradingView, it's just basically the, the max daily range. So it's just the, the, the daily range that a pair or an index or a NDC, a Forex pair, a stock will do. It uses calculations of the last 30 days and then just basically puts out data like what is the, the daily range, the range on each specific day on that specific pair, stock, instrument, index. And then you can use that data for your advantage or just pushing even lower to say, okay, so I know that on a, on a regular day, the daily range on it, like for example, on the NASDAQ, the daily range for today was um, 192 points. So you, so you should know, okay, so the daily range on this pair is, or on this index is 192 points. So I know that I definitely have room to take more trades because all the way down to ADR, that's about 60, 50 points more. So ADR is kind of, it just gives you a, um, it gives you a uh, basically a tool basically to see you know is it already max ADR if it's max ADR then you're, you're probably gonna see choppiness you're probably gonna see some some kind of relatively slow pairs or slow choppiness or whatever uh, but you can see here on the Nasdaq that it's just really slow like in the last couple of days it, it has not been going all the way to ADR so that told me that hey we've been kind of just ranging last couple of days so we're ready to see a breakout Look at that. Look at that move. Keep coming down. Look at that. Almost 4R right now. 
so not a big deal, but we did already take twenty cents off of only twenty percent off. I could put it on the standard deviation. This will be available obviously if we do break, dash down below. The seventy five will get out, uh with the spread though, uh I don't know if I'll get out. I don't even know how many pennies I'm crossed down. But I'm looking to get out that twenty cents off. I can't unfortunately. You just need to hold on to it because you'll need to make a profit. You just need to hold on to it. Yeah. Hopefully that's an okay spot for you guys. Yeah. Um I'm just gonna put a little bit more here so I don't have to worry about that. Um pretty sure that was, yeah, uh, right there. Could've flipped the script and that was wrong, but I don't care. It's all good. Yeah, that's gonna flip. Pretty sure that was the right spot to flip. Yeah. Okay, pretty sure that was the right spot to flip. Right there. Yeah, I don't care, I'm just worried about putting the squeeze. Um. You should really push up against it. Then maybe three ninety five. No. Yeah, then maybe three ninety five. Yeah. Almost three ninety. Could've flipped the script. Yeah, that's gonna flip. K, uh [noise] Sorry about that. So we are short a sixty five, thirty six, forty nine. [noise] Maybe it's time to switch over? Yeah. And break out gonna be either both directions up or down, Yeah. 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 Yeah.
cruising along near highs as well for the day. This is crazy on, yeah. on, on Wolf. Like, uh, honestly, Sean, I, I just took a quick little break. And I, I covered myself with a stop order because I talked about this yesterday. Uh, it doesn't matter the level of risk. If you have yeah, that's a NASDAQ like 100. Uh, I had a, I had a stop, he's on the left uh, corner. 27 breaks because I knew I was sitting on the bid uh, and going to get in position. I didn't think this would happen so fast. And thank goodness there was liquidity. Friday could be either a, the like slowest day out of the, of the week or it could be the craziest day of the week. Uh, like whenever you're trading stocks, every anything can happen. Because the market is going to close tomorrow. I mean today, so uh, it's just sometimes I've seen crazy days on Friday on Nasdaq 100, freaking insane crazy days. And then some days it's just really choppy. So it just depends. It's probably because we have a lot of news right now with the president inauguration, National Guard, everything. Lots of news right now, so um, not sure why it's falling like the fundamentals. It could be just because of I think Trump was like, forget what Trump was saying. Said something about maybe it could be the COVID 19 new emergency coronavirus plan. Who knows? It'd be a small, maybe 10 to 15 cent loss if this comes all the way back in Virgin Galactic. Sundial just ran into a, a big bite, a big bit at 70. Um, I, I do still have that 75 short. Uh, if it breaks through that, I'll get the last like quarter out below that 75 on the way down to 70 even. But a uh, little bit of a bounce happening in space uh, off of 30 even here. You know who I bet likes the, the, the pet space? I bet you Mr. Wonderful likes the pet space. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities here. Uh, and again, Kevin O'Leary, if there's catalyst, I believe that he's going to like this spot uh, for that. And also, maybe a bank stock, WFC today. Look, we sniffed that one out early, man. I mean, this was a short basically at 9.49 on this low of the day break here at 62.69. It was an absolutely fantastic trade, roughly a little bit above VWAP right there at that time, or below, sorry. Nice short at 32.69. We've emptied it all out, right? And this is the thing. Like, we're not going to hold on to things for too long. We're going to get in, we're going to get out. We're going to take advantage of scalping. That's what we're doing here. It's day trading, scalping through. It resisted that 32 break. But man, this is a big trade for me today. Short 32.70 all the way down to 32. And we're scalping back and forth and in and out of these names. So that's been a big trade. Talent's here. Like, talent's here. Good, good long, early. 26.50, 26.40, all the way up here to 28. And again, like, look at all these executions. We're taking risk off. And I just think that that's a super important thing. If you want to hold something for a longer term, that's fantastic. But here, look at all these executions. This is like <laughs> look at look at everything right now. It's all everything's down. Oh my God. Um, two thousand Russell is down two percent. Silver down two point seven percent. Gold up down almost one percent. Bitcoin almost down six percent. Devon down five percent. Cbad down six percent. Emerging markets Brazil and, and Mexico down three and one percent. VIX down um, up 7%, so that's a good hedge if you're trying to hedge it. Walmart down 1.8%, Disney down 1.3%, Tesla at break even, McDonald's at break even, Boeing at 1.7%, Intel down about 1.8%, all the altcoins are down. Looks like the market is just down in general. I want to look at SPY real quick. Yeah, SPY is freaking down. All the way back down to the downside there, so we miss out on GameStop, but look. All the way down today on SPY. I know we've got a lot of questions for him. It's going to be an exciting interview, and it's been an exciting day so far. I'm really happy to kick off uh, the long weekend with yet again a very So the very gap down and then a continuation of that gap. Pretty good one, and it's been an exciting one. What else is new? It, it's about to get better, but as you said there, we have lots of questions uh, for Kevin when he comes on. He's been a great friend uh, for the show and a lot of fun when we have him, but... Uh, I'm going to throw this out there. If you guys uh, have any questions uh, for Kevin, hopefully uh, uh, maybe toward, towards the end we can get those to you uh, live on air. So do not hesitate. Do not be shy. Looking uh, at the two-hour chart, it's breaking to, through the 200 EMA. Uh, I was sort of under my breath saying find a bid. I was talking about Petco. Uh, I did get this 27.38 uh, long. I was waiting for it in front of that 27 bid. Now, that 38 is basically where the bottom was yesterday, but I was using the even dollar from this pullback. This was like the, the long off the open. I got, a bet, got out of everything uh, in front of 28. And I got to make some mathematical modules on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. was a strong move holding 27, snapping back. For like the yearly kind of returns on it. 30, uh, and then 30 plus 40 or so was that top range of a bounce. That's why I took the long at that particular price there. It just can't seem to catch a bit. I took a 50 cent scalp. I'm, I'm trying to get some more shares out of 28 because we can't hold the rest of it. But we've been waiting for it patiently. 
Uh, now is the time. Let's go to Brennan. We have our guest of the day. We don't want to keep them waiting, guys. Uh, chairman of O'Leary Financial Group, Kevin O'Leary. Mr. Wonderful, back with us once again. We appreciate your time as always, Kevin. Uh, let me jump right into things here. Before we get your you know, forecast of what to expect going into this year, let's take a second maybe and have a look backwards as far as investors are concerned. What are the important lessons that we need to take away from a year that was 2020 on all scales going into the new year as far as investors are concerned? Well, you know, it's incredible about 2020, given the incredible volatility that started around March 7th. Is the majority of the gains on the year happened in 19 trading sessions. Some sessions as high as 11% up, some as, as down 8%. The market was crazy wild in March, April, May. So if you weren't in there at some point, if you weren't exposed, you missed out on a, a phenomenal year. And you, know, you can trade around positions, but sometimes you have to have a core holding batch of equity because you want to catch those eight hour trading sessions where you get 11% move. And so it makes it harder to time the market when you have that kind of volatility. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of that this year because of all these cross currents occurring with stimulus and all the rest of this. But the big headline from last year was interest rates remain benign, but that is not going to be the case this year. And they've already come out and said that, you know, no rate increases are coming for the foreseeable future. So possibly, you know, by the end of the year, could we see something change in that sense? Well, the Fed can say whatever it likes, but the bond vigilantes, particularly around the 10-year, they can do whatever the hell they want. You saw the 10-year go through 1%. My prediction is that it's going to end the year at 2%, so 100% increase on that just from the bond vigilantes. And that really doesn't affect your, you know, anything about equities because equities don't get hurt until you can trade a 10-year at 3%. That's when guys take money off the side and park it in the Treasury risk-free, make 3% a year. They don't care about 1% or 2%. But we're not going to get that next year. But the point is anything with long duration, any kind of like a utility stock, that's going to suffer as rates slowly go up. And the, the reason they're going to go up, even though the Fed keeps its hands steady, which they said they're going to, is that people are watching the $2 trillion fall from the sky from a helicopter, and that basically is inflationary at some point. It's, you know, money for nothing and chicks for free for the next three months. They're pouring money into the American economy like they've never done. You know, this new 1400 check plus another 400 that goes straight into people's pockets and in many cases into the market. So you're going to see a lot of volatility. I, and I want to make sure we, you know, we reiterate that point that you made uh, initially. Is there a number, as far as a percent number is concerned, that we should have in cash to be able to take advantage of some of these opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I think if you're, if you're, you know, you have your core holdings because you you don't want to miss the big up days. And as we just talked about last year, that happened across 19 days, which is really concentrated. But I like to have, when I know I'm going to be going into volatility, up to 20% in cash to take advantage of really big down days. So you can sprinkle a little, you know, if you get a big correction, as we saw happen in the energy sector last year, and you put some money to work, you've had a hell of a rebound there. Now, maybe you're taking it out of there again because we just saw the bad news coming out of Exxon, the whistleblower story, Biden saying he doesn't like hydrocarbons. So you've got to be, got to be nimble. You've got to be nimble. But I like 20% cash in a vol year like we're about to have. So give us, you've already uh, mentioned a couple, but give us your thoughts. Where, where, what group, what area of the market should we be focused on that maybe might be under the radar a little bit at this point? Well, you know, one thing you've got to think about when you're talking about a, a 10 year moving from one to 2%, or even it goes up to 175, what's your inflation hedge? Are you, are you a gold guy? Are you a Bitcoin guy? Do you like other cryptos? What are you doing to trade inflation? Because you have got to have a strategy. And so, you know, maybe you play the GLDs, maybe you go with Frank Holmes, you know, he's got a couple of uh, royalty-based, uh, go AU. I mean, I, I own some of that too. But the point is, I like to be in a year like this, 5% weighted in gold. Now, a lot of people are talking Bitcoin, and that's interesting too, because it continues, you know, to go, I think it's about 800 billion, or, you know, almost a trillion market cap. The only issue, because I know we're going to talk about Bitcoin, let me lay something on the table for you got to consider. There's a lot of talk that institutions are endorsing Bitcoin. That's not exactly true. I'll give you an example. The big story last year in Q4 was the PayPal trade. The idea that PayPal was now taking 
Bitcoin as a currency to actually purchase products. But what they're doing actually is immediately mark to marking. Bitcoin comes in that split second, they turn it back into USD. They take no risk on Bitcoin. They are not going long Bitcoin. They're not endorsing Bitcoin. They're just allowing it for you to trade it on their platform back into cash because every vendor that sells something on there wants the US dollars. The other myth is that somehow a big money center bank like a Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan is telling clients to buy Bitcoin. There is no, I, I can't find a single discretionary fiduciary. In other words, you're running grandma's, you know, million dollar portfolio. You're putting her 5% weighting in Bitcoin. That is not happening. Where there's discretion, they're not taking that risk because the regulator hasn't made a ruling. Not in Germany, not in Europe, not in England, not in Switzerland, not in China. And so the risk you would have is if you have somebody at 5% on a discretionary basis in Bitcoin, and all of a sudden the regulator steps on it and you get a 30-40% correction, you're part of that class action suit. So be very careful in the assumption because the Bitcoin, the, everybody in the Bitcoin world, the Kryptonians, the Bitalorians, they're all telling you that this is now a, a mainstream institutional product. No, it isn't. Let's approach this from a little bit of a different angle then, Kevin. You've made your opinion on Bitcoin uh, very well known in the past. Is there a way that we might be able to get exposure to this market, cryptos in general, from an equity standpoint that we need to be aware of? Well, the big one that people are waiting for is the Coinbase IPO. And that's gonna be interesting because it's the first big infrastructure into crypto. And the talk of the town is it's gonna be another hot IPO. The only risk, because that will be a pure equity play. The only risk is that it's gonna be highly correlated to one currency, Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, unfortunately, even though people talk it up as an alternative to the market, as a counterweight to the market, it's highly correlated to the market. When the market corrects, Bitcoin corrects even more. So we haven't seen that alternate you know, sort of bias. In other words, go long Bitcoin when the equity markets are correcting. So what I anticipate will happen is you're gonna get the Coinbase trade. It's gonna come out. It's gonna be hot, but it's gonna be volatile as hell. And because it's gonna have market volatility and Bitcoin volatility, because none of the other currencies over the last three years have made it made a difference. Nobody cares about them. Bitcoin's <laughs> the trade. I no, wanna get your no thoughts on uh, the EV space here before we uh, get into some more fun topics, uh, before we let you go here, Kevin. Uh, we've seen Apple come into the space. We've seen Baidu now come into the space saying that they are also going to develop an EV product of some sort. There seems to be endless SPACs coming in the EV space. I mean, everybody knows about Tesla. Where else should we be looking? You know, I, I think battery technology. Elon is going with lithium. Others are talking hydrogen. And I think battery is the whole story. There's also the consideration is, is lithium going to become a scarce commodity? There's lithium mines in, in Canada. You know, these are all the big issues of the day around EV. EV is here to stay. EV market share will continue to grow. Tesla's, you know, in my view, fully valued. I mean, that thing is, is valued beyond a car company. It's a data company. It's a tech company. It's a battery company. It's a solar company. It's everything. And maybe that's okay. But at the end of the day, there'll be lots of other SPACs going into EV. And every single car company that wants to stay in business is going to have to do something in EV. And I think the play on EV and even the Apple play, if you think about it, because all of the talk of Apple going into EV is it's, it's us in Canada. It's Magna. Who's going to supply all the parts for all of these different players? So the way I look at it is if you want to get into EV at a decent multiple, you just go along some Magna and see what happens. Now, they're having a change at the top. Don Walker's checking out. New guys are coming in, but that's okay. Walker did a fantastic job in that company in the last few years. But to me, that's your baseline hold on EV because you're not going to pay some stupid multiple. And Magna's profitable. And an amazing run uh, into the end of the year Magna had uh, as well. Great stuff, Kevin. We'll bring in Sean and Neil here to talk about some more topics. Sure. Hello, Kevin. How are you, my friend? And welcome back to Trader TV Live. Seems like you're having a good day as we are here. About to enjoy the long weekend. Uh, and I know, you know what? We always say money doesn't sleep. And I'm sure that you have some uh, plans this weekend <laughs> as well. I wanted to talk to you about a quote that you made, and, and I think that you're prepared for this on CNBC. If we can throw it up on the screen, I'll just let everybody uh, see what this was here. I have no problem with day trading, but to me, you can go to Las Vegas or you can day trade, same thing. That's not investing, that's gambling. So, oh, I understand right what you're there. getting at, <laughs> and to be honest with you, Kevin, I 100% agree with you. What we're doing here on the show is not investing. 
and I actually do preach, like you do, value. And you told me last show, cash flow. Is that better? I practiced that uh, from the last time. So uh, that's so. And look, I've been getting people into, and again, you know, I, I'm not an investment consultant or anything like that. But I like J.P. Morgan sub 100. I like some of those value plays you mentioned, Exxon Mobil. But the thing about what we do here on the show, and, and that sort of what we take different from that quote, is. We have plans of action, and I think as long as you're day trading and you're not trying to YOLO, which is one of those terms that all these young kids have, you only live once, and there's Reddit boards where people are just going crazy on some of these stocks. Neil and I really do preach risk management, and it's about having an idea of when to get in and then when to get out, right? And sort of basing your, your plan of action on that. I consider that very similar to investing. I know you want to put capital to work when it's necessary, what what was sort of meant by that quote and i'm not sure if you've watched too much of our show but i really feel like with the education part that's really key to day trading and we tell people all the time trade with paper money first and then step into this wild wacky world of day trading mm -hmm. well that quote was all about my right new initiative and some of my fellow sharks are involved right. we're going into a big financial literacy cycle for the next two years we were going to high schools before the pandemic talking to 18 to 20 year olds about investing long term and, and, and then now we're doing it virtually. You know, I'm doing virtual schools in New York and Texas, Florida, California. I'm trying to get kids to start thinking about their futures and putting something aside for their retirement. So my, my point about day trading, I got no problem with it. What I'm telling traders to do, including the, those listening right now, is every time you get a score, every time you get a win, you take 10 cents on the dollar and you put it into your long-term portfolio your little nest egg. And I, you know, I, I've been involved in, in Oak shares for years because I want to build my own indices. My core holding, and I, I trade stocks, I do very speculative deals on Shark Tank. I got 56 companies. And every time I sell one, I take 10% of the winnings and I put them into a basket of OUSA. OUSA is a, is a subset of the S&P 500. It's the most boring ETF in the world, but it's got the most highest quality balance sheets. OUSA, which is the mid-cap, same idea. OGIG, which are all my high-tech flyers. It's an index. And OUR, I'm starting to trade Europe now. So I take 10% anytime I get a win. They go into that core holding basket, and I never touch it. Yeah. And they pay distributions, most of those ETFs. So I live off that, and I pay for my expensive wife's renovations. The whole idea is that you need your base. Then you trade around it. But if you don't have a base and poo, -poo hits the fan, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, you and I have more in common uh, than we may even know because I often talk about my wife's purchasing power and it somehow uh, outgrows my income power. So uh, yeah, that, we're, we're on that one. I've made a small, and I agree with you, uh, my largest holding in my account is Disney. And we were picking up those shares in March and again, you know, lots of capital to work there. I love Disney and my second largest is Google. So I'm sort of with you on a lot of these. I do think you gotta put some away. What I've done though, last time, Kevin, so a couple times ago you roasted me because I was wearing my smartwatch and man, was that a bad feeling. So I brought my first watch that you've seen already, the Breitling, the Chrono Mat, okay? But I did Very step nice. in. Very nice, but I brought some major bling because I'm in I, Miami. I, I made a purchase. I want to show you guys some watches. I made a purchase as well, Kevin. I want to see, see your it. watches. Based on your advice, I took close to that 10% and I stepped into the big boy realm here, so I actually got the new 41 millimeter Rolex Submariner there in black. Unfortunately, I don't have the pull to get the Kermit green, but I did get the black one. I'm loving this watch. And again, as you know, watch is maybe also a good investment card. That 41 mil Mariner is already up in the aftermarket, so you've made money on that in a way that's going to continue to grow over time. I wanted to have some fun with you. Let's sure. stay on the Rolex theme. I'm going to show you the hottest watch in the world right now in terms of appreciation in 2020. It is the rainbow right here. Hello. <laughs> up about 300%. And what I like about it, it's outrageous. It's covered in rubies and diamonds. It's just, a de just despicable in terms of what this thing says. <laughs> but this is a great investment. Number two in the world right now, staying on the bling theme, the <laughs> eye of the tiger. Ooh. Now, the only one in the world with a red band, this is a Rolex Daytona Eye of the Tiger, this is it, the only one. Kevin. This is also very, very valuable. 
But I want to show you something crazy. Kevin, those are all diamond studded, my friend. This is. Uh, I know, this... but I'm telling you, you know, who knew I'd go bling? I've gone bling. And this is so very, much fun very in impressive. Miami. You, so... walk, you walk around with bling, and all the women come up to you and say, Can I have that watch? It shouldn't be on your wrist. That's a woman's watch. Kevin, we're going to get in trouble with the wives here. I mean, I don't know if you're going to be coming out with a rap video soon or something like that. These, these watches are ridiculous. Congratulations. Let me show you something crazy. Now, Let's one go. of the hottest new trends in watches is to make the case out of a soft a piece of sapphire oh my god and the companies that are doing that are selling them between 150,000 and 800,000 along come these two dudes in Australia they go to China they go to the company that actually carves these cases and cut a deal of their own and they bring out a new brand called it, it's just amazing this thing is called a Tiva and here is a solid piece what a solid piece <laughs> of sapphire it's got a tourbillon movement made in China and Unbelievable. this thing, the only one in the world with a red band, I'm telling you, it's the size of a dish. It's so big. You wear this on your wrist, people go crazy. But it's solid sapphire. Guess what? Instead of 800000 they're making them for five grand U.S. How cool is that? that so I'm that... going to give these guys a shout out. I'm doing something really big with watches. If you want to follow me, follow my Instagram at Kevin O'Leary TV. Watch what's about to happen. I'm going to do some crazy stuff with all the watch manufacturers. I'm having so much fun with this, it's crazy. I'm going to bring some really cool pieces, and some people are going to be winning them on my Instagram site. Kevin, that's amazing. If you, if you need me to uh, help you promote anything, hey, look, I can take one of those watches uh, and throw it on our social media as well. Just go, go to my Instagram site and watch what happens. This is good. This is the kind of stuff I do for fun. It's yes. going to be crazy. Yeah, exactly. And look, you got to have sort of a passion. I know you have a few other ones uh, as well, and you know, it's amazing. I don't want to take up too much of your time. We do have some questions from the audience. Kevin, thanks again. I love my new watch, and I don't know if I can uh, diamond stud this out or not, but I did have to move <laughs> up the ladder to get this, so thank you for some recommendations. Those watches are impressive. I will follow you on Instagram, but only if you follow me. What's up, Neil? That, absolutely, I'll follow you back. What's your handle? <laughs> it's at Trader TV, Sean. I've been tagging you. Let's go back and forth, Kevin. I love it. Okay, uh, cool. I'm just curious about this Eye of the Tiger. I mean, you actually wear that one in public. People would lose their minds, minds. on that bad boy. That's got to be got to be my pick. Kevin, we, we we have some questions here. Oh my goodness! Don't do that to me. I got my, I'll be staring at my program monitor instead of talking to everybody here. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of questions to get to, and uh, uh, we're going to go with one here because I, I know you have, you're busy, and hopefully maybe we can have you on again to get some of these other ones. But uh, from Don't Know All right, so right now in the NASDAQ 100, we're just kind of waiting it out. Um, I have my stop loss that profit, so I can't lose on this trade. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to wait. We're holding this small piece in. And we're just going to wait and see what we do here. So, yeah, I have my locks up a profit. I can't lose on this trade. And, yeah, we're up about 2% for the day. So, um, really happy about it. Kevin O'Leary, it's true about the long term investment. Don't you make a shift? Yeah, I mean, I have my own portfolio. So. I mean, long-term long term investments is fine, 100%. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, once you're making money from trading, where is that all, where all of that income? Where, what are you going to do with all that income, extra income? Are you going to either buy stuff with it or are you either going to invest into other things? So whether that's investing into real estate, investing into um, small businesses, investing into maybe a, a hedge fund or another fund, or just investing into like a portfolio, your own portfolio, you know, that's eventually what every traders, I guess, should do, you know, invest all their extra income, invest it in different things to make you even more money. Your goal as a trader should be, your goal as a trader is to, to basically make sure that, you know, you don't have to rely on on a job you don't have to rely on like showing up to the charts every day you just want to build up capital invest and just make those investments work for you we'll try to get when you get you back on we'll have a few more questions for the audience i absolutely promise i know you guys uh, want to do more but uh, uh kevin i have to throw you back to brennan it's been an absolute blast as always uh i uh, can't wait to talk to you <laughs> thank you
Kevin, real quick before we let you go, I, I want to reiterate that point you were making about watches in general, but you've said this and made comments on this in the past, how important it is to have something as a passion, maybe not as you know a job or, or even an investment, but something that you can do in addition to work just to keep life balanced, especially in this environment. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. It's the yin and yang, something crazy on the side. And you know what I like about watches? It's expanded my contacts all around the world. I've got a huge collection now. The largest collectors on earth are the royal family, the United Arab Emirates, and the Saudi government. So now I have all these friends over there, you know, people that are part of the royal family talking about watches because they see me talk about it all over the Internet and on CNBC and everything else. And, and, it's, and I've actually got into deals with some of these guys now because, you know, they, they have the largest watch collections in the world. And the reason you want for watches for men is you appreciate in value. My, you can buy this, or not, it's free. It's Chrono 24. It's an app. You download it on your phone. You put your watches in it. And every night it gives you the mark-to-market value of the last trade globally of your watch. And so I'm up 113% year over year on my collection. That is a, a fantastic resource and a fantastic app. I actually have it on uh, on my watch. Kevin O'Leary, always a pleasure, uh, sir. Make sure you come back and join us again. <laughs> Take care, my friends. There we go, guys. Mr. Wonderful back with us uh, once again, giving us a, a take on a whole bunch of different topics there, guys, which I think is really important that we, you know, kind of reiterate the fact that you have to have something in addition to work, especially in this environment, you know, with the, with the pandemic, with everyone at home. We all need distractions, guys. A hundred percent. Uh, that we was a heck again, guys. We did a heck of a lot of fun, guys. Uh, obviously, uh, it's good to have Kevin. I know there was a lot of other questions in there, and uh, if we if we'd had them longer, we would get to them. But as he said, he enjoys coming back on, so uh, keep those filed away. Uh, a lot sort of happened. Uh, well, a few things happened in the market while we were going. Uh, I don't. I didn't have a chance to quickly see here, but that this uh, Woof uh, Petco made that nice little bounce. Uh, so we'll go and uh, we're waiting to use the power up. Finally gonna get it here. Talked about 27 the dip. It felt like a pie in the sky price level and I did have a mixed result in my first long of taking at 29.50. Got the first half for a scalp, second half uh, reloaded back in front of 29 and lost in that trade. But 27 was the level I wanted to defend. Uh, that was the bid we had in it, 27.38. Got some out for the, uh, the win in front of uh, 85. Uh, then got some on the north side of 28 for like the set the 80 cent win and I just got the rest out when it tried to turn here uh, stalled out and this is the pre-market uh, the opening range bottom 2850 once it failed at that price level I said no more trailing stops in some of these long positions I'll uh, have a look manually when it retook this level at 2850 I just got out for the dollar win on the last of the position so uh, there we go uh, this was one of the, that was the first trade I wanted to have on Petco today I did take another one, but this is the one I waited all day for. Alrighty, so, one. what a trade. We're just basically waiting on this right now. And look, I want to take the opportunity to thank Kevin O'Leary himself. Uh, I'm going to be, you can follow me at Trader TV Sean on Instagram and at Trader TV Live. But look, I mean, it's 10 o'clock. It's almost 11 o'clock. I think we just had one of the, yeah, a fantastic interview there with Kevin O'Leary. We went back and forth. You're not going to see that kind of talk on other networks, that's for sure. 2.5K, so 8,800 likes right now. That needs to go, like, I think by the time uh, we throw it to Valeria and then come back, this needs to be at 3,000. If you enjoyed that interview, you enjoyed some of those watches, those are crazy watches. Uh, but not only that, forget about Kevin O'Leary. It's great to have him on. I can't wait to have him back on again. Already, so... Um, yeah, we're holding this trade. We have our stop loss locked at break even, so we can't lose on this trade. And uh, yeah, we're up about 2% for the day. So, I mean, honestly, just what a freaking good day. What a freaking insane day. Insane little move. Like, we had it. Look at this freaking bar right over here. Like, for my entry, I'm up about 130 points. So, insane entry right there. Really insane entry. And I'm just, you know. Just happy about it. Okay, so we happy, happy, happy. So, um, really good day today. In a second, but again, guys, thank you so much for all the support. Looks like we're gonna get to 3K. Can we get to 3K? Let's maybe. And yeah, we're just gonna wait. We're gonna hold this baby out and see what we do here. We may continue going lower all the way down to ADR right over here. Um, to be honest, I may just close out from all the way down to ADR. Um, at ADR. Or at this lower right up here, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we do here. I may just close a little bit more in, in, at ADR and then just hold the rest of this position toward the 800 DMA right over here. Um, but yeah, just a really good trade. Thank you guys so much for watching.
Um, yeah, just a freaking amazing trading session. Freaking amazing trade. Two percent for the day. We're up about like I think like five or six percent for the week, ending the week. So we we're up about eleven percent last week, and now we're up about five or six percent um, this week. So yeah, we're 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 coming into the year really good. So I'm I'm happy about that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys are having a freaking awesome day. And I'll see you guys on Monday, 8 a.m. CST. Y'all have a freaking good day. Y'all have a freaking awesome afternoon. And I'll see you guys later, right?